All right, guys, uh, welcome back to one of my uh, videos again. We are here with uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson, uh, the current writer of Action Comics, Aliens, and a lot more. And uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself, uh, but I'm very excited to get into probably two of my favorite, or at least two of my favorite franchises currently being written. Uh, but I will let him introduce some of his work so you kind of get familiar with it. Oh, thanks for having me, man. It's good to okay. be on here. So yeah, Philip Kennedy Johnson. I am currently writing action comics and Alien and some stuff that's not announced yet. Um, I wrote the Superman title for a while as well. I've written The Last God for uh, DC Black Label. Uh, creator on things aside from Last God include Last Sons of America, Warlords of Appalachia, Low Road West. I co-wrote The Power of the Dark Crystal with Cy Spurrier. Um, yeah, that's a that's a primer. Oh, Kill a Man, long, uh, Kill a Man alongside Steve Orlando and uh, Alec Morgan at uh, Aftershock. Oh, that one yeah, I didn't. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. Um, and now that you just announced all these works, uh, I always like to ask uh, artists and writers when they write so many different things, some indie, some for the big two, uh, what would be like the one work where someone's like, oh, what's good that you've written? I know it's a hard question, but the first book you'd be like, yeah, read this one. This is pretty much my style. Oh, thanks. I um, It really depends on what they're into. Like whenever, sometimes I get the question, Oh, about my work, but also just in general, like I've never read a comic before. What should I read? And I never just answer with a book. I it has to, I I need to know more about that person that's asking. You know, like if it's if that's if that person just loves um, animation and like they just they constantly just watch, uh, you know, Adventure Time, and SpongeBob, and with all that, I'm not, I'm not going to give them the same answers I would somebody who loves all the Marvel movies or somebody who doesn't watch any of that stuff and just watches you know, Tarantino stuff, or like they just watch network TV, or I, I didn't know what their their loves are, you know, as far as shows and movies, but also novels or even music or whatever. I just kind of want to know more about who they are. Yeah. Um, I mean, The Last God is one I'm very, very proud of. Um, it's a um, high fantasy horror mashup. It's like, what if the fellowship failed um, in a world where it's kind of like Tolkien meets body horror, sort of. Yeah. And it's, I'm very, very proud of it. And it, um, it takes the lore and world building extremely seriously. Um, it feels a lot like Robert E. Howard, Conan, like the bleak kind of, kind of uh, fantasy in some places. But uh, some people still dig out fantasy. So for them, I would say something like, and to a sports fan, I would say Kill a Man, which is a story about a, um, an MMA fighter who's outed as gay right before his title shot and loses everything, has to take it all back. Or somebody who's interested in LGBTQ um, issues as well. Like yeah. Kill a Man is, is a letter to them. Um, written alongside Steve Orlando, who is, you know, one of the most important LGBTQ voices in the comics, in my opinion. Um, you know, my earliest work was Last Sons of America and Warlords of Appalachia, both um, genre stories with some political overtones. Um, I have a, a webcomic on my website that's, that's hard horror that kind of prepared me to write alien so yeah. it's just it depends what people are into you know yeah uh when i was uh looking at the list of your work I've, i haven't read all of it but i've read last god i've read alien action comics uh superman and uh last god it was funny enough i'm not big into fantasy too much i like some stuff like game of thrones all that but um when i read this i was like oh this is like it starts off kind of like you said kind of like uh, the hobbit or more lord of the rings and then it flips that. And I'm like, oh, this is this is pretty dark. Like that ending of the first show, I'm not going to spoil it, guys. Uh, it, it definitely took me by surprise. I've only read like the first four issues of it. And I want to get the hardcover soon. Um, but yeah, that that would be my suggestion. That's why I suggested to my buddy who is a huge fantasy fan, because uh, I feel like they would love it. Um, but yeah, I, I can see why Last God, uh, especially critically, uh, really loved. Um, I like to go on comic book roundup and it's like every issue is nine, nine, nine. I'm like, oh, I got to read this. And so that's oh, why, no, no problem. And um, yeah, I really enjoy Last God. Uh, but talking about uh, Superman, uh, that's, I know you wrote Superman. I read the short trade for just your Superman run, but now you're been on action comics for quite a few issues now. And my biggest thing is that I always have to ask is because Superman is up there with Batman, Spider-Man. Um, it's an icon and this has got to be some type of pressure. So do you ever feel like is ever nerve wracking to write a character who's been in so many people's lives, whether it's in when they're kids or adults or whenever? You know, it hasn't been. And I expected that it would be. I am. Um, 
I, I really expected to have this moment of freak out because I've heard about that moment from, <laughs> yeah. from other writers, from my friends who have also gotten their big shot. And they're like, oh, shit, I got to actually do this now. <laughs> um, it can be nerve wracking, I'm told. And I, um, I expected that, but it kind of didn't come. I, I, just, I was just really excited to like I, I kind of felt myself kind of rub my hands together like now, like now let's do this. Let's show people the Superman that I see in my head. Yeah. And show everyone why he's the the true one, you know, like because there's you've seen such different takes on Superman over the years. Um, the one that I see in my head is the one that I feel is the truest. Obviously, we all have our own. Uh, obviously, any writer who's writing him yeah. or has written him feels exactly the same way. So I'm not saying that mine's any more important than anyone else's, but um, I'm just excited to kind of, you know, evangelize my uh, <laughs> my version and you know, put him out into the world. So I just couldn't wait to get started, honestly. Yeah, when um, I read with Superman, I felt like that was kind of uh, an interesting book because it felt almost like a family book uh, where it, or more of a, a father-son relationship. And I really like yeah. that um, as someone who has a daughter now, uh, this is what like really gets me when I'm reading Superman is him being this father. And I really like that it was a different John. I really like Tom Taylor's John right now, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like your John is a little bit more of like a teenager, a little bit more. Uh, he rushes into things. Sometimes his emotions get the better of him, but it makes sense. He's young. He's, he's, this is new to him and he's been to the future. He's been tortured for years, <laughs> all these horrible things for this poor kid, but he's still hopeful. Um, and then with action comics, you still have that family vibe. I love that you put Supergirl, him, Lois, all of them are important. But what I really like is that he seems to learn from Clark, but he's also scared his father is going to die. I love this back and forth where he respects him, but he's also like, what are you doing? If you go there, you're going to die. And I just like Clark to me feels like every dad where he's just like holding it all together. But with Lois, he's like, man, I'm scared. <laughs> and Lois is like, no, it's going to be okay. Like, like pretty much every wife would do or mother. Um, so I, I really like that. And I always wondered, um, I know you have a, kid is that do you base a lot of it off of that like the dialogue between john and clark i know he's much younger than john but that family or father uh son dynamic yeah completely i mean having a son having having my son has completely shaped my life um and i uh there's a lot of him in the story there's a lot of him in john um a lot of my feelings toward john a lot of his feelings toward john um reflect my feelings towards my own son and um how i just you know, I just look at him and it feels like all my, all my flaws and problems are made right in him. You know, he's just yeah. so awesome and uh, such a great kid. Um, and there's just such, so much potential in any kid, but, uh, you know, I'm obviously extremely biased towards my own son. I just see so many beautiful things in him. Um, so like in the, in the Superman, the one who fell arc, um, when he's, when they're flying through space and of course there's no sound in space. So he's, they're not speaking. And Superman just hangs back and watches John fly and just just enjoys watching him fly and just thinking about how incredible he is and is writing this letter to him about how much he loves him and how proud yeah. he is of him. Because um, I mean, the whole thing is a literal love letter to John that he that he reads after the fact. <clears throat> um, so it's it's uh, it was a real, a real privilege to have the opportunity to write that um, for my own kid. And so hopefully Anders will read it later in life and see himself in it. Yeah. And uh, last question I have about Superman. Is there is there a run or maybe even just one story that really kind of made you this this Superman fan like that you were like, oh, yeah, one day I'm going to write Superman because I always get so many. I get a lot of when I ask for Batman, it's usually one or two stories. But Superman, I ask people and it's always so different. Everybody has that one story that really shaped them to love Superman. Is there any of that for you? You read it or even the movies uh, and you watch and you're just like, yeah, I want to write that character one day. Um, it would have been Superman 400 for me. Um, oh. It's 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 this annual that came out. Are you familiar with that book? I, I am not. No, I. So just everybody knows I've gone to DC with New 52, which is not the best Superman. Um, and I went back, so I've read a lot of um, like the big ones, like Mark Wade's and uh, Jeff Johns and all that uh, prior New 52. But I've not read that far back yet. Yeah, that's the one that um, that made a huge impact on me as a kid. And it's funny, I've heard Bendis talk about the same issue. Um, oh, really? So I, I, I swear I'm not lifting the story. I, <laughs> I've got it. I've, I've got it packed up. But, um, Superman 400 is a, just a single, like a double size or so, uh, annual that's an anthology of different short stories. And the theme is Superman in the future. 
and it's as simple as that but every i think it was the same writer for the whole thing but there's all these different art like if you look at the the list well i mean some of the artists actually wrote their own stuff i think but um if you look at the the credits page on the front it, the credits are listed down the left edge of the page and it's like all the most famous or most influential people who were alive at the time it was it was early 80s or early mid 80s like 84 or so um so it was like frank miller mobius um jim steranko did this big like old testament type thing at the end um there were pinups by like sinkevich and uh, Bernie Wrightson and Steve Ditko and Will Eisner and Jack Kirby and, and just oh, an wow, insane big, big. list, an insane list. And I was used to most of my books were older, even when I got them. Um, they were like old, ripped up secondhand, thirdhand books. A lot of Kurt Swan in there. Um, a lot of really old stories by like just legendary uh, writers from the previous generation and artists. And um, Superman 400 was different than all of those. I was used to these one-off adventures where you open the comic, you get an adventure, and then by the last page, it's kind of over. Or sometimes there'd be one that goes from issue to issue, but many of them were just one-off adventures, um, like especially like the Silver Age stuff. Um, so seeing a story that really treated Superman more like fine art, mm. um, it was just a very, it was my first experience with Superman as like seeing, appreciating it as an art form. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously every comic I've read is part of that art form, but that was, as a kid, that was the first time it really looks, the art, the art styles were all so different. And I was used to the idea of Superman, like this is what Superman looks like, you know, in my head, this is what, this is, this is the, this is what Superman looks like. So seeing Frank Miller's take, you know, alongside Steranko, alongside, um, God, I'm drawing a blank. So many different people had such different, such wildly different takes on what Superman looks like. And also there's just very different interpretations of what the world, of how the world was affected by his presence. Yeah. Um, it just really blew open my imagination for what was possible in comics, but also for what Superman means to the world. So I, I never forgot that. Uh, there was also this other, um, another annual, actually. I can't, I, you know, sorry, 400 was not an annual, it was an anthology, but the annual number 10, is another one that uh, was was powerful to me as a, just as a visual thing. The cover was this beautiful cover of Superman holding up a, a sword, and that kind of stuck with me. And that is definitely um, an influence on the story I'm telling now. Now that he's becoming a gladiator again, yeah. Um, so the story inside is not about that. It's it's a, I want to say it is a Kurt Swan story, but I could be wrong about that. Um, the story inside is not what I expected to read, um, but it still captured my imagination for what was possible. And because um, I mean, the idea of Superman holding a weapon of war is so, it's just, it's just so unusual and um, kind of doesn't make sense. Like the, the Superman who, who would not kill anyone. Yeah. Um, so I, part of that has been part of me writing the War World saga now is me kind of unpacking that the uh, that image and how how would it make sense like what's a story in which superman we could see superman in a john carter warlord of mars kind of scenario or a, like a, a frank frazetta painting with superman in it you know that's that's kind of what i want to see yeah the the newest arc is i've only read this one i, I know the next one comes out tuesday and so uh i did get that vibe of almost almost similar to planet hulk it's it's been a while since i read planet hulk so i could be wrong but like this super strong character that on earth is almost unbeatable but when going to space also i'm not going to spoil what's happening if you have to read superman and the authority but um it's what's happening and the position he's in i was actually really excited that you actually are writing the authority too because i don't know where they were for like 10 years but i love to see him back in the uh spotlight especially with superman who is kind of those guys aren't all that uh i don't want to say good but they they do a lot of shady stuff or they do it brutally and superman's that very uh, boy scout but not really and the way he talks to them is almost like a father to them uh so i'm really excited uh to see them all work together hopefully they do and they don't get split up by the next issue but uh i'm really digging that uh but as far as that you also are writing aliens which is uh probably one of uh, marvel's biggest takes from fox is alien predator so my big question is what's better alien or predator <laughs> I mean, they're both awesome, but I've got to say alien, right? 
Yeah. Uh, but no, my real question uh, with Alien, I like to do a non-comic question. Do you have, what's your favorite movie of Alien and then least favorite? I usually get the same least favorite, but I always want to hear what the favorite movie is. Least favorite is Resurrection by a lot. Um, <laughs> I, I love all the other ones. I mean, people are very critical of the new ones, but I love them. Yeah. And I know there, there are aspects of them, like little things that bug me that aren't yeah. quite what I wanted or whatever, but you know, it's, they're still great. And um, the old ones are above reproach. Yeah. And I actually liked Alien 3 a lot more than most people too. My favorite though, I, I feel like Aliens, the sequel, the 1986 Aliens is probably the, the best movie of the bunch but i but my favorite though has to be number one um i i think the second one is as far as emotional arc and plot arc and um incredible visuals and just such a bold decision to go in just a different way than the original there's so many things about it that make the cameron film just a 10 out of 10 but that first one had such an amazing impact i can't imagine seeing it for the first time i mean because it's such a it's become such a cultural cornerstone. Uh, I, I just can't imagine not knowing what's happening in every scene. But, but imagine seeing it for the first time and just getting your mind blown over and over. Because, I mean, this, the derelict, everything inside the derelict ship looks so crazy and otherworldly. And then yeah. the, the space jockey and then those things and the eggs and you see one on his face. And every every visual for a while, for every few minutes, you're just getting your mind blown over and over again. Like just a series of car crashes. It just doesn't stop. Um, so for me, it's that first one. Yeah, it's uh, it's always hard for me to uh, choose. I do go with Aliens only because I think it's more rewatchable. Like I would, mm. if someone's like, "Which one do you want to watch again?" It's usually Aliens, but that's because it's just a, a quicker movie, I think, and it's it's more fun to rewatch. Uh, however, I did show my wife Alien for the first time about four years ago because our first date ever was Prometheus, which. I like Prometheus, not the best first movie uh, to show someone who's <laughs> never seen Aliens. Uh, and then we went back and started watching them. Uh, and she was, uh, the biggest thing she took away from it is she's like, this is like really slow paced, but creepy. It's so different than all the other Alien movies, Prometheus and so on. Um, so I can see why, because when I'm reading your series now, which I'm really enjoying, uh, it kind of takes vibes from almost all the movies but its own thing i love the fact they're on a spaceship again in the very first arc i was like okay this is my favorite thing when you're trapped when you can't get out um that to me is the best part uh but with your second arc uh, i don't want to spoil too much but i really like that you're kind of doing it like almost like i don't want to say they're a cult but they feel like 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 a cut off zone of people who aren't really all there uh and they they start doing uh terrible things to each other and then the twist at the newest issue was crazy um what i don't know how long you plan to be on here but do you like to tell more of just an arc and then take a whole different uh characters and everything for the next arc are you going to keep doing that because i love that but i I don't know if you're going to do like a really long arc yeah i expected to be able to do a story that would go on and on and on but um when when um marvel took over but that's not the way they wanted to go um 20th century actually wanted to they wanted the contained arcs like they used to at dark horse and so we're doing that we're doing these for the foreseeable future we're doing six issue arcs i love it um with these these through lines that kind of tie them together so instead of following the same characters all you know throughout the whole thing um, we are, there are these themes that tie together or these uh, subplots that continue from story to story. So people who do buy them all, um, it rewards, it rewards uh, picking up a, every miniseries, you know, a little bit. You can, you can very much tell that they're all in the same universe, you know. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. And I, I like the, I never thought about, but man, aliens on a, like a farmhouse or in a farm area, that, that is some scary stuff. Uh, they can hide in a lot, a lot of places, that one kill. Uh, oh man, I wish I get. I'm gonna talk about a little this one kill that you did in that one arc where the guys on the uh, I think they're on a cliff or uh, like they're talking, and it's just a sudden death that I was like, whoa! And usually comics don't surprise me, and uh, that <laughs> this these deaths are probably some of the best. I've read a lot of the Dark Horse, and I've liked them, but I've always wondered like why don't they push some of these like gruesome deaths? And uh, <laughs> the second arc definitely is delivering there. But uh, oh, do you, there's one there's one coming. <laughs> even better oh man oh that my god is hard. It's by far the best of the series and just upsetting like upsetting 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I was. I like that. I feel like uh, your story approach for Alien so far is you put enough twists in each issue where I'm like, oh, where are we going now? Or, oh, I didn't see that coming, uh, but nothing over the top. It doesn't feel that was my biggest problem with Prometheus. It's like just they throw so many questions. You're like, oh, but what about that? Um, and then you just forget about it. You're like, oh, maybe next movie, but no. Um, mm. But for yours, I feel like you're just doing just enough twists and turns uh, and adding enough um, characters where I actually care about the characters. I think that's the thing I was missing for a while reading Alien. I actually care about your characters. And even though they're self-contained, right away, I love, I feel like you do a lot of family dynamic in a lot of your stories. I'm really liking that. Um, but with this newest arc, I really like just, I don't know, I don't want to call them a cult, but they feel like a cult in that in that little place. They, they follow one leader. And then you find out what happens with that leader. Um, so yeah, I really am enjoying Alien. Uh, would you say that, um, would you ever, I know uh, Ed Breeson is going to be writing Predator, but would you ever want to write a Predator and Alien series, like a verse? Yeah, dude, I'm not going to say no to that. I, um, <laughs> I, I love those movies growing up too. I actually read the novelization of, the, of that first movie so a lot as a, as a kid. And I thought yeah. it turned out really good. I mean, I, I have no idea how well it holds up. I read it <laughs> But I liked it a lot back then, and um, yeah, I love. I mean, when I saw the, the the xenomorph skull on in the in the hunter's ship in that second movie, I was so incredibly excited. Yeah. Um, and then I, yeah, I short short answer is that yeah, I would totally love to do that. Um, I I'm having a great time in the alien universe though, just just keeping it to itself. I if I ever get the keys to the crossover. I would want to treat it super carefully and not break anything in the in the standalone aliens universe. I want to yeah. introduce the predators in a way that that makes sense in the alien universe and doesn't break any of that established lore. Because I that stuff is sacrosanct to me. I, yeah. I don't want to ever fuck that up because I those the alien movies mean so much to me. And that's one that's one thing that I'm trying to course correct a little bit in these books. Is I, I want these books to feel like they're in the same universe as the movies. That's yeah. one thing in the Dark Horse books, as cool as they are, some of them are incredible. Um, they they feel like a like a alternate universe to the films. I agree. And I want the I want the books to feel like they're in the same same world as the movies. So they can just go from movie to movie or from movie movie to comic to movie, and it all feels like the same thing. That's kind of the, the guiding light of everything I'm doing in the alien book. Yeah, I'm reading the omnibuses for the dark. Well, Marvel's now publishing them. And uh, when they have like a million different color aliens, I love these stories, but I'm like, doesn't feel like the movies, but it's still fun yeah. to read. Uh, but saying that, um, the, the Superman answer you gave your favorite, this is this question is now even more exciting for me because I love to get new comics I've never heard of. But when you were growing up uh, or even as an adult, were there any uh, writers or artists or stories that really stuck with you that you kind of inspired you to want to write more or just ones that you love that you love talking about? Um, you know, like for me, it would be like something like Why's the Last Man or as I got older saga, those <clears> like kind of shaped me to want to read so many comics not just uh, Marvel and DC, but everything. Uh, are there any out there like that for you growing up that really kind of made you the big comic fan that you are? Yeah. Well, I mean, the Superman 400 is one of them um, that I talked about. But the um, for a long time, almost all the comics that I got were out of these boxes of old third-hand books from flea markets and garage sales. And I was completely ignorant of like Vertigo or any kind of any kind of indie comic stuff or any kind of counterculture comics are being made stuff like yeah the vertigo stuff like swamp thing um preacher yeah um those things are even watchmen those things were just not on my radar at all um I, i'd never been into a, a, a real comic store all the all the comics that i'd seen had come out of grocery stores and drugstores spinner racks things like that yeah um but that's and that's the rare occasion i was able to actually get a new one you know like they were almost <laughs> always really really old yeah so i just didn't know anything about the other stuff um, like why the last man would not have been been a thing for me. Yeah. Um, when I started, like when I was late high school, I guess, or like well, high school. When I was in high school, um, things at DC and Marvel were really getting shook up back then. That was when Age of Apocalypse was happening, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they killed Professor Xavier and uh, just revamped the whole X Men universe. And I, again, I hadn't been reading, I was not this old guy that had been reading comics forever. So I had no idea if it was going to go back or not, or how they were going to get out of it, get back to normal continuity. 
Batman was in a wheelchair and <laughs> Paul, uh, John Paul Valley was, was Batman. Now Superman was dead. You know, like I, I just didn't know how any of this was going to shake up. So it was, I, it was like, wow, is this, is this real? Like, cause I, I didn't have, I was still a, a relatively new reader of new books. I was yeah. before that I was reading all this old stuff. Um, so I found at some point I got the, you know, they had the subscription forms in the old, in the old comics yeah. and I subscribed to, I think one of the Superman series, I can't remember which one. And, but that was a little weird because back then they were, they would go, they would go weekly from Superman to action, to, Superman yeah. to, action to whatever. And Batman was doing the same thing. So I had to kind of bend time and space to try to get the different series that I didn't have access to. Um, but it was a really exciting time because I had no idea it was going to come next. Hmm. And, um, and one of those things actually was Emerald Twilight that oh. Ron, that Ron Mars wrote for Green Lantern, where Hal Jordan was now a bad guy. Yeah. And we introduced a new Green Lantern. And that was really exciting, too. I mean, I, I hated the idea of Hal being a bad guy, but um, I really liked the new the new Hal, the new um, Green Lantern that he introduced, Kyle Rayner. So, yeah, I, I mean, I was really inspired by by all these crazy moves, uh, how how big all the swings were. Some of them were executed really well, including Emerald Twilight. Um. So yeah, I, those, I remember those being really impactful, partly because of the, the big swings, partly because that was just the age where I was really invested in it and just couldn't believe what I was seeing on the page. Kind of didn't know what to expect, if anything's going like to normal or not. So yeah. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, growing up in the 90s, when I had to pick up comics, it would be like for me, Green Lantern is Kyle and Flash is Wally because that's, that's who awesome. I grew up with. And then when I got more into trades uh, in the early 2000s, um, I started getting more into the indie stuff, um, but it, you're right. The big, big things they did in the nineties, especially I'd say, especially DC Marvel, definitely with um, Age of Apocalypse, but DC, uh, like I said, killed off Superman. Batman was a big thing. Uh, Wonder Woman kind of lost her powers for a little while. I just read that uh, series. And uh, I, I like that they took the chances. I feel like they almost doing it now with Superman, your Superman going into space and having uh, John take over as Earth Superman. I think these chances, uh, not only does it give a chance to go to a new place, but it gives new characters a chance to grow. I mean, like I said, I love Kyle, but somebody who gets into Green Lantern like late 2000s, they're probably like, who's Kyle? And uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's so crazy to see a difference. Uh, but interesting. Uh, it's the big ones that some people hated that made you a comic fan. Uh, that's, that's some great. I love those big changes. I just read Nightfall for the first time two years ago. And I was like, wow, uh, didn't love all of it. Uh, but I really loved the beginning and the end. I thought that was a great way to shake up the, uh, Batman mythology and everything. Um, but that, say, about, about that, about Nightfall. Um, so we just introduced Mongols champions, right? Yeah. On, uh, on war world. And one of the questions I've seen online is like, who are these, like, who are these champions? Or well, like one of the critiques I've seen, like somebody was like, ah, oh, it's just like the Black Order. Um, but it's actually not the Black Order. It was in, like, those guys were inspired by Bane's crew from Nightfall. Yeah, the ones who took down the greatest fighter. That's, yeah, it's the perfect way to kind of give a challenge to Superman. Well, I just, I remember him having this crew that he, that he knew that he, that he came up with. That, that helped him become who he was back when he was at, uh, in that prison. Um, so starting in issue 1040, which is the February issue, we're going to start seeing the, uh, the backstory, the, the, the backstories and the, the backups in the comic are not going to be unrelated anymore. They're going to start to deal with Mongol and his champions. We're going to see how Mongol became who he is, like how he came up uh, from, from his early time on war world and, who his champions are and why they're important. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, I like the backups, but I felt like they were almost disconnected from action comics. It just felt a little jarring. Yeah. So, that's, that's my, that's my one critique. Like I, yeah. I wish that they were more connected. Yeah. Um, I think they're being executed extremely well. I, I love everyone I've worked. I mean, I've got, God, I've got backups. I was going to say, yeah. Becky, Becky Clune and Michael <laughs> Conrad and like Sean Lewis is killing it. And all these guys, um, like Brandon Easton, they're all such great writers. Yeah. And the art has always been super on point too. Um, so absolutely no shade thrown. Um, and actually they, Becky and, and Michael did a really awesome job um, tying in the, the Midnighter stuff with, with War World itself. Yeah. The was ending cool. was great, yeah. And I kind of wanted to get back to that. I want to get back to finding a way to tie them all together. 
Um, so we're going to start doing that with the, with the backups starting in 1040. So pretty awesome. excited. Yeah, no, that's really exciting. Um, and with that, of uh, some of the stuff I haven't read, so you might even have more genres, like you said, some political ones. Um, but I've noticed that you kind of jump around, like some writers um, kind of stick to a genre that they're really good at. But you, you go from the uh, horror with uh, aliens and uh, um Marvel Resurrection, and then you have the Cape Comics with Superman. You got the big fantasies like Last God. Is there a genre out there that you're like, you know what? One day I'm gonna do that, like comedy, maybe romance, <laughs> anything out there that you want to write that you haven't wrote yet? I've got a comedy short story I want to do at DC at some point for an anthology. Um, but mo the thing I really want to do, I, so I read everything that Brubaker writes, sight unseen. Yeah, same. Um, and I would love to do to let some of that out and do a spy thriller or a crime story. Yes. And I've actually got one coming together now. Yes. Um, that's, that's going to be coming out probably in around like late spring, I would say. Um, so yeah, I've got a, I've got a, a crime slash spy thing coming out soon that I'm way excited for. Um, yeah, that's a big one off the top of my head. I've been looking forward to that for a long time. I mean, you could argue that Last Sons of America is kind of a crime story, but <laughs> it's all it's more of like a world building kind of drama type thing. Um, so I'm just gonna go harder into that 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 realm here very soon. Awesome. I crime crime dramas, I feel like there's not enough. Uh yeah, Ed Brubaker. Uh I really like Ed Breeson's crime stuff. Um, um yeah. but there's just not enough. I'm trying to think there's a new one from the Texas, Texas something that was pretty good this year. But uh, I just don't feel like there's enough. So yes, more crime. If you could make more crime dramas, that'd be awesome. Um, but now that you've worked with um, a few, I mean, you wrote some of the biggest characters with Superman. Uh, I know you even, did you, uh, hopefully I'm saying, did you do that uh, short for Captain America for the? Um, yeah, I wrote, I wrote the Captain America mini. The back in Black, uh, not Back in Black. Um, the King in Black. That was the mini, right? In between. Oh, no, no. no uh, Empire. Is, mine is Empire. Yeah, Empire. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you wrote some of the biggest characters. Is there a character, if you're allowed to say, uh, is there a character you want to write um, or characters that you always uh, like dream that you'd be a good fit, but you haven't written yet? I love writing Batman and I, I've written him a few times. I haven't written him in, in a big series yet. I've gotten to write him in, a, in, a, in several one shots or short stories. And that's always super rewarding. Um, because I mean, my, my two big heroes growing up were Superman and Batman. I mean, I know there's probably a lot of people who feel that way, but they meant a lot to me in, in a way that is almost unhealthy. Yeah. Um, I'd say once when I discovered Hellblazer, uh, it was like uh, <laughs> a running through the cornfields, kind of like, or tall grass, like, da, 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 yeah. like, I, where have you been all my life? <laughs> I, I've read every fucking word that Hellblazer's ever spoken in a comic really um, that's I a love lot <laughs> that character i love him and um i would love to write hellblazer i know they they typically give that gig to to brits and i totally understand why he's got such a distinct way of speaking and he's uh that character's like part of his at is of his character is just that celebration of like that liverpool kind of like blue collar yep. character that he is you know like he has this he has such disdain for magic even while he is this badass magician um so, but I, I feel like I got a good handle on it and I would love to write him. So that's top of my list. Um, I would say Moon Knight too. And everyone's, nice. I'm told everyone wants to write Moon Knight. Um, He's pretty but, it but it doesn't always sell really well. Apparently the new one's been very successful, which is great. Jed McKay's has been great. Yeah. Um, I love Moon Knight. I love all the different takes. And I love that his character is so crazy that all the different takes make sense. That mm -hmm. you, can, you can do different takes on, on Moon Knight and it makes sense because of how crazy he is. He's as crazy as Batman probably ought to be. Um, <laughs> That's a good way know. to put it, yeah. Yeah, he's so... Batman should be more of a psycho that he is. That was actually an aspect of All-Star Batman and Robin. I mean, he's very unlikable in All-Star Batman and Robin that Frank Miller and Jim Lee did. Batman is, I mean... Yeah, a little um, uh, goddamn Batman. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, he's not like... He's not a likable dude in that. <laughs> um, he's not very put together. He's, he's angry. He's crazy. He's super fucking violent and... Uh, and incredibly abusive to robin uh, but it you know it makes sense for the character for who he for who he is for the stage in his career that he is in there are things about that book that make a lot of sense to me even though it's not always really fun yeah um you know it's just it's feel like it's true to the character and, and moon knight is a character that can really revel in that crazy definitely you know, in, in a way that batman kind of can't um so yeah i like moon knight a lot who else i want to do a doctor strange hellblazer team up man 
Uh, that would be I mean, awesome. Uh, I understand why that would be difficult. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, I feel like they would just hate each other. Yeah. And like Strange is such a flamboyant sorcerer. Like has all, he's all about the big shiny circles and doing like it's all so visual. Yeah. And um, Hellblazer is just a con man. Like who has this, you know, he has magic ability, but he's never pulling. Well, sometimes he does, but he, he's best when he's not, though. Yeah. Like the, the best Hellblazer stories is not about the big flashy magic shit. It's about tricking someone. It's about using it's about sleight of hand or just using people against themselves um, and just, you know, yeah, such disdain for his fellow magicians. I feel like they would just look down at each other like crazy. That'd be a really fun book. Yeah, Hellblazer. Um, I'm actually reading all the big trades or deluxe ones now, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I've known John, uh, you know, and all the, other, but man, they really show him as, like you said, like a piece of shit. Like it's so funny that sometimes I'm rooting for him, but a majority of the times I'm like, man, you are just what he does to his like his best friends. I think it was his mother. Uh, it was really yeah. just a single issue with a monkey and it, it was crazy. Um, and so I'm just reading this like, wow, Hellblazer does not hold back. And some of this stuff is written 20, 30 years ago, and it's still like relevant of the uh, politics oh, uh, or even I mean, more. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah, when like, he was, when he was first written, he was supposed to look like a very young sting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I never so, knew that, but it does look like, sting. yeah. Like his, his original, the, the original vision when he showed up in, in Swamp Thing, he's supposed to look like sting. That was the model. Interesting. Um, so that's that tells you how long ago that was. Yeah. Um, when he was like in his twenties or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, he's definitely not a good dude, and he knows it. He and he wants that distance from people because he knows how he breaks everyone. Yeah. He's just such a, such a selfish dude. He's not a hero. So whenever I see the the new fifty two Hellblazer, no disrespect to him worth in that book, but like that was a because they had their marching orders. They had to, everyone had to yeah. kind of, okay, like he's, he's mainline DC now. He's not, he's not Vertigo anymore. We got to make him like a hero kind of. And that was this huge mistake in my opinion to try to make Hellblazer into a hero that's, you know, taking down demons just because that's what he does. That's not who he's supposed to be. He's, yeah. He, he only does good things when it's in his own interest or when he's, yeah, he doesn't just save people just because, you know, and, and I mean, arguably he almost never saves anyone. <laughs> like, yeah. When he when he does good for someone, it comes at this horrible price. Usually, like he ends up screwing them more than more than saving them more often than not. Um, God, I just love writing that character. It's it's rough. It's like hard living writing Constantine, but yeah. I, I I love that character. Yeah, I hope you do get to write. I mean, he you're right. He doesn't. He kind of pops up for a while, and it's mostly written by Brits though. Tom Taylor is Australian, and he wrote him. So hopefully, some luck for you. But uh, I really would love to see uh, one ca character I like a lot that nobody really talks about. But I feel like because a lot of your stories are family dynamic, I would love to see you write something like Animal Man. Um, I feel oh, like I, I got I, to write an Animal Man short story. That was really cool. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, and, I dude, good, good call. It was in. Um, There's an anthology called Dog Days of Summer. That it was. It was really funny. Um, the editors in that book were. Uh, Dave Walgas and Alex Antone and they put together an anthology of animal themed summer stories <laughs> uh, it was very specific and there were some really fun stories in that book like there was one about crypto well Superman and, and crypto there's one yeah. about Matt Cow in the end that, that the Dio himself wrote um, but I got to write Animal Man it was it was really fun oh, so yeah awesome. and there's, there's another family dynamic thing in there too it's all about saving your pack Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Animal Man, um, it, it's one of the rare 52 <clears throat> comics I actually really love. I mean, I love Grant Morrison. Oh, it was awesome. Books. That was my favorite. I mean, I obviously I'm a huge Grant fan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now that we're actually like friends to get to talk, which yeah. is a, huge, a massive honor. Um, the, the Jeff Lemire Animal Man so was good. off the chain. Just so, good. so, so good. The art, too, was just, yeah. just it's insane how good that book turned out. I love it. Yeah, it's actually one of the rare comics I cried because uh, of what happens. And I mm -hmm. think now I, I, it's hard for me to read it being a father. Uh, I don't know if I could revisit right now, uh, but it is it is crazy. Um, but yeah, definitely Animal Man came to mind. And um, I was thinking uh, another, I don't know, because when I read your Batman Superman back and forth in action comics, not the newest one, but the last one, uh, where he's just like, oh, this is new for you. And I was like, oh, this is funny banter. I like this. So I'm like, man, I would love to see like... Um, uh, team up Batman and Superman or a Justice League. Um, I, I would love to see Justice League come back to like when I grew up with Justice League, it was a big comic. 
And now I feel like just like I want to get it back there, but I also don't want it to be big epic. Just just the team working together. So I would love to see you right after seeing your Superman and Batman. I want to see your rest of your team. And you're kind of writing a team now with the authority with Clark. So I think you could do it. Um, but it yeah, was, uh, last last month we put out the Superman Batman. I'm sorry, Batman Superman and the Authority book. Yes, um, that was one shot. That was really fun. Anytime I get to write Superman and Batman together, it's just a joy. As I, I mean, we had that scene where Batman's wrecking shop in, in Gotham in the rain yeah. and, uh, and Superman just kind of flying along with his arms crossed, just kind of talking to him while he's taking out these bad guys. And then you see him again on this fortress, like you mentioned. So showing more of that relationship in the Batman Superman, the authority story was really, really fun. Awesome. Well, um, with that, I have a big question uh, with uh, so much stuff that you already have out. There's a, I know you mentioned you have some coming out soon with the crime story, uh, but are there any uh, big ones that you kind of, even if you can't talk about at all, or ones that you want to promote anything that you have coming up uh, that you want to talk about for future work that you're coming out with? Well, the one, the big one that, that I would love to announce is sadly too far out in the future for me to mention it. I would love to talk about it. That's going to be big news when it happens. Yes. Um, until then, <laughs> animal man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but spies. No. <laughs> Um, let's see. So there's, there's the spy thriller crime thing. There's, um, so depending on when this comes out, this, this is coming out this week, this, this interview. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it okay. out. Uh, I can push it back a little if it's like a big, no, 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 whatever you okay. want. Okay. But this week, um, action comics, 1037 oh, comes yes. out. Of course, this is the next chapter in the war world saga, the big fight that we've been building to all yes. year, like literally for a year. Um, we get to see that finally happen. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, big, big moves happening, much like the books that we talked about back in the day. It's big moves. So I, I hope everyone digs it. Um, the same day, there's a Gotham City Villains story. Uh, sorry, Gotham City Villains anthology with a bunch of super heavy hitters in there. And I've got a story in there with Ricardo Federici, oh, wow. my, my colleague from The Last God. He's de- he drew a Rachel Ghoul Batman story for me. It's about us. Nice. A- it's a little bit of time jump stuff happening between a chess game between Batman and Rachel Ghoul, and then something like a like a physical conflict that happens in modern day. Um, chess is chess was a big part of my life growing up with my my dad and me. We weren't like close, but we played a lot of chess, and that was something we bonded over. Um, so it's about that kind of. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Excited for people to see Ricardo's work because he is coming on board the Action Comics ongoing series. Oh, really? In January, yeah. Awesome. Dude, you're you're gonna shit yourself. <laughs> is it, the the art is so unbelievably good. I can't oh, believe yeah. it. If, you, if you saw the Superman Worlds of War Future State uh, variant issues that he did, uh-huh. in, the interiors look that good. Every page, oh, every page is a masterpiece. It's unbelievably good. So, and that's when the sword and sandal stuff really starts to ramp up in January with, the, with, with issue ten thirty nine. So that's that's when it's almost like a relaunch of the War World saga. It's just. I, I can't, I wish I could ex- spoil what's coming because it's just so exciting. So yeah, if you want a taste of that, check out Gotham City, um, Gotham City Villains, number one, this anthology, it comes out this week. Okay, perfect. Yeah, this will probably be out either today or Monday, so right before it comes out because uh, yeah. Tuesday is DC. So uh, and, perfect. And I've, I've also got a Carnage uh, one shot. I'm a, Rom V, my friend and I are, are doing a, um, carnage one shot it's a 30th anniversary celebration of the character oh i did see that yes that's also i, I also love a lot of um rom, is this i always wonder is it ram or rom it's rom v rom rom, rom v. V, yeah. his uh man his swamp thing uh yeah i know it's awesome right <laughs> i mean i, I gotta say I, I i consider you newer time i know you've probably been right forever but for no, you no. him um um can't even think like there's a couple of writers that uh kelly thompson you you guys to me are like the next wave and it's so, so exciting. You know, I, I'm a fan of reading. So I felt like that 2017, 18 is when you guys started coming on board and mm. you're taking these characters where I'm like, yeah, give them something fresh and something exciting. And I almost get more excited for you, your guys stuff than the bigger names where the bigger names, I get more excited when they're like, oh, we're doing our own book. And I'm like, oh, good. Cause I, I think you guys have these stories in your head forever that you're like, oh man, I want to write this Superman. He wants to write that Swamp Thing, which his Swamp Thing uh, is amazing. So you're going to no, be writing- carnage which carnage is that weird character i don't like but i actually love his stories if that makes sense like he just has yeah. some wild stories like carnage usa but 
he's just a character I never liked, but for some reason, all his books are good. It's just such a weird character. Carnage me. USA is a good choice. Like Carnage is a, is a character that can be very one dimensional, kind of boring to me if it's not, yeah. if it's not done well. If it's just like a, just a murder romp, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I guess I don't need that. But if it's a really interesting take, it can be really fun. Um, and they've got lately, let me do some creative things with it. When we do, when we did extreme carnage, um, that was my pitch for that was, uh, the symbiotes meet Manchurian candidate. Um, and they let me do it, which is great. It made this, this crazy dark political thriller that kind of played on current, like current real life political divisions that are happening and turned it into a, into a carnage story. So that was cool. And now this next one is, uh, basically carnage meets the exorcist. Oh man. Oh. Um, I mean, not literally like there's not literally an exorcism happening, but it's, it's the tone. When you read the book, you'll, you'll get it. You'll get nice. what I mean by that. Like how like, trying to capture that old horror movie kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited for it. Wow. So you got a lot of different stuff. I, I didn't even know about that. I've seen the carnage 30th anniversary, which I I'm blown away. That's been 30 years since carnage has been around, but, um, that that's awesome. So you got a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, is, uh, are you doing any, I don't know if you do Kickstarters. Are you ever do Kickstarters? Or are you mostly just publish? I'm not doing the Kickstarter right now. I okay. was I was starting to look at Kickstarter stuff right when some big two things started to come together. So I ended up not not getting around to it. Um, and now the, the Kickstarter stuff I pay the most attention to are the are mostly the the up and comers who are trying to like get, put themselves on the map, like the the smaller books that yeah. are often super creative. Um, not to say that the big people doing stuff there aren't also awesome. But I'm trying to find like the hidden gems on Kickstarter. Um, and I don't have anything like that right now. I am putting together a creator owned with a good friend of mine, actually the artist from Kong, my Kong story from, from Boom, uh, oh, forever, okay. Chad Lewis, he and I are putting something together. Um, that doesn't have a home just yet, but he's doing awesome work. That's going to be really fun to see. I'm doing a kid's book with my friend, Dustin Mollick, who is the colorist on Smoketown. Smoketown is a, is a creator owned crime story actually that i did so like there is there is smoke down um it's like a blue collar like steel mill town um anthology of crime stories called oh, smoke awesome. down. Scout Comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah please do i'm very proud of it that was me and a couple of friends you know my day job is music yeah uh, quote unquote day job is kind of becoming <laughs> the, the balance is more like 50 <laughs> 50 now but um I, i'm a musician with the military and i had these other two friends who are both professional saxophonists who also happen to be really talented artists and so oh, the three sweet. of us just kind of for fun just did a bit of comic like made a web comic and um scout comics picked it up and it oh scout becoming, comics okay scout, my, yeah. my friend's part of them uh he does um steak i think it's called yeah steak uh oh, nice. the, the vampire comic and uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's awesome well that's a yeah i mean you never know who you meet and <laughs> to meet them in that's pretty awesome to meet them. And then they, they draw, I, I always, that's what I like to see is like people come together, just create something special. So that's a web comic that we can read online. Well, no, the, well, the first issue was, yeah. If you check okay. out my website, my website's just my, excuse me, this is my full name. It's philipkenleyjohnson.com, two L's and Philip. You can find the Lost Boys of the U-Boat Bremen there. That's a 110 page um, web comic. that's all finished, all black and white, like a period horror piece that, awesome. I mean, Really, Scott's Alien is all through that thing too. You can totally see the I'm definitely of the reading alien, that alien movie. Yeah, you'll you'll dig it. If you like the first movie, you'll love you like that yeah. story. Um, and the other one is a is just a one shot called Killing Marcus, and that was the one that I made with my friends um, Scott and Dustin, and then that got picked up by Scout and became Smoke Town, which is a ended up becoming an eight issue series. That is awesome. So, yeah, so now it's all out there in a in a, in trade. Well. Um, that's pretty much all the questions I have because you, you kind of, we went over pretty much all the major series you're writing, but uh, I'll let you kind of uh, shout out all your places where people can follow you and everything. But uh, I just want to say it has been an honor to interview you. Uh, I always like to interview people who are coming up bigger and bigger. Every time I see your Twitter, some news coming out, I'm like, man, when you got action comic and Superman, I was so excited. Cause I, I think my first work I ever read for you was Marvel resurrection, just the, the one shot before it became even the three or four part series. And mm -hmm. uh, I was like, I gotta be honest. I hate Marvel zombies. And uh, <laughs> I, I love Robert Kirkman. I did not like Rob, um, Marvel zombies. So when I read yours, I, maybe because I had no expectations, I was just like, I was like, wow, there are characters in here. Like people I care about are dying. <laughs> right. Like it, it really hit me. So I was excited since then. And then when I read your action comics, Last God, Superman, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is a guy I got to follow. Um, so 
Uh, by all means, continue putting out this great work. I hope that you Thank get you, even man. bigger characters. I really hope. DC, if you're listening, Animal Man, please, just please. <laughs> That's all I ask for. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to shout out anything or put your uh, tags or anything like that for people. To yeah, pop. man. Thank you. Yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm online at philipkennedyjohnson.com. I am on. Let's see, Facebook under my full name, Twitter at Philip K Johnson, and Instagram at my full name with underscores in between. Awesome. And guys, uh, if you haven't checked out any series, uh, these are out on the stand. So just go to your comic shop, pick them up, um, especially uh, the new Action Comics Tuesday. And then next Aliens, is this this week or next week? No, sadly, because of some printer stuff happening, Marvel's has some delay issues. So seven and eight. So the first trade, uh, Alien Bloodlines, is out now in trade. And then issues seven and eight have come out since then. And that's those are the first issue, the first two issues of Alien Revival, and then the issue nine comes out. I'm told the first week of February or something, like first or second week of February. So it's a little oh, bit of a big delay. pushback. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know those yeah, all, all those omnibuses are getting pushed. Everything's getting pushed back. Um, I yeah. guess that's just how it is now. Um, but if you want to jump on Alien, the, the way to go is the trade of Alien Bloodlines. Is it's I'm really proud of that story. That's the first foray into Marvel's Alien. Um, really very proud of it. So I hope you dig it. Yes, check it out. And uh, guys, if you want to leave any comments below, leave them below. Uh, you know where to follow um, Philip Kenny Johnson now with all his tags. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and go pick up some good comments. Thanks, brother.